Hi there, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about ARIMA models and how we can forecast into the future with them. In a previous video, I talked about ARIMA models in more detail and basically what they mean, what the terms are and how you can find the optimal terms so that you can fit an ARIMA model to your data. Okay, so if you want to check that video out and understand how to find the optimal parameters for your ARIMA model, definitely go ahead and check that video out. But in this one, I would like to focus more on the actual forecasting part using the parameters that we found for that model and see how we can actually predict into the future for a price series, for a Microsoft price series. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I want you guys to be aware of the fact that ARIMA models, although they might seem very interesting and simple because they use past performance to predict future performance, they're not very suitable for proper trading algorithm when it comes to the stock market because you cannot just use close prices in order to predict future prices. It's not that simple. And in this video, we're going to see exactly how that looks and why it doesn't really work. So let's go ahead and go through this example. So an ARIMA model, an autoregressive integrated moving average model, is a forecasting algorithm that is based on the idea that information in past values may be indicative of future values. And ARIMA models explain this time series, in our case, our price series, based on its own past values, basically its own lags and the lagged forecast errors. Let's import the libraries that we need and let's read the CSV file that we have. It's uh, Microsoft hourly bars for the past year. And if we check the head, we can see we have the date open, high, low, close, and so on. And we're just going to focus on the close, okay? Because we're going to fit this ARIMA model on the close prices. Let's describe the data frame. We can see what we have here. And what we need to do in order to actually see whether we can use this model in a real world scenario where we actually try to predict future values in the stock market, we're going to first have to split the data set into a train and test set. We're going to use 20% for our test set. And now if we run this, we will get our train and test set. So the train set contains 1,402 uh, records and the test set cons consists of 351 records. Now we already have a model that we chose for this specific case. So we know that we're going to use ARIMA and we already have our order. We already know the terms that we're going to pass to this model because we already uh, calculated them in the previous video. Okay, so definitely check that video out. I'm going to put down a link in the description so you can understand better how to calculate the P, D and Q terms so that you can fit an ARIMA model specifically to your uh, data set. Okay, now what we need to do is just import ARIMA from Stats model, TSA, ARIMA model, we're going to import ARIMA. And now we're going to fit the model to our train set. And let's check the result as well. We're going to get the summary. And we can see that our AR terms and MA terms should be good to be used because the coefficients aren't very close to zero. So that means we can keep all of them. And also the P values are pretty, pretty good when it comes to, to this model. So all of the terms that we used seem to be uh, relevant for our linear regression. Let's go ahead now and forecast 30 steps. Let's run this. It's a very simple thing to do. And if we check, the output of our forecast method. Let's check the first item in the tuple. So this is the forecast. And if we check the actual 
method out of sample forecast, we can see what it returns. So it returns, as we saw, the array of out of sample forecast, then it returns the standard error of the forecast, and then the conf is the confidence interval for the forecast. What interests us is the confidence, because this consists of a tuple with the lower bound and the upper bound for our confidence level. Okay, so we have our forecast, and then we have our confidence level. And these are the two things that we will use in order to see whether our model is actually usable or relevant for the particular problem. So we're going to transform them into a Panda series. So we're going to take our forecast and then we're just going to get the first 30 steps okay, in the forecast because we only want to see the next 30 days actually the, the next 30 hours because our data set consists of hourly price data, not of, not of daily. So we're going to take that and just predict 30 hours into the future. And then we get the lower bound and the upper bound. This is because when we're going to plot them, we can actually see the channel that consists of the lower bound and the upper bound so that we see exactly where our forecast lies. Now, we can just plot this. So we're going to plot the first 30 steps that are the actual price. And then we're going to plot the forecast. And then we're going to fill between, we're going to have the lower and the upper. Let's do this. Of course, I didn't run it. <laughs> Let me run this. And now if we plot it, we can see that our actual price is the blue line and our forecast is the green line. Now our confidence interval, as you can see, it actually matches the actual price. So theoretically, we could find an optimal uh, ARIMA model to fit this better. But even if, let's say, we would add a constant, in this case, the constant should be negative for the, for the next 30 days, because as you can see, our uh, ARIMA model has a slope that is positive, while our actual price has a slope that is negative. Even if we would add a constant that would be negative, it would fit the data better, but nevertheless, as you can see, it's not very optimal. But the reality is that I don't really recommend using ARIMA models in a real world scenario, maybe you can use it just to try to detect some trend, but you cannot use it on a very short term basis like we're doing here with hourly data. Because first of all, price data cannot be fitted properly with just a simple linear model in most of the cases. And secondly, because price series aren't stationary, and our ARIMA model requires stationarity, so therefore we need to deal with the returns. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, definitely check the video out uh, in the description where I actually explain ARIMA models in more depth, because that is quite an interesting video for you to actually understand ARIMA models perfectly so that you can apply them to your particular problem. Now, for price series, of course, they don't function perfectly, but the whole point here was to show you how you can forecast into the future with ARIMA models and, of course, why they, they don't really work in the real world because in, uh, in the real world, the markets are much too complicated to be fitted with simple linear models. Before I go, I just want to thank you guys for subscribing to our channel and for liking our videos because we really want to help you guys grow in the data science and machine learning space. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.